Well, welcome to class, everyone. Glad you're all back for our entrepreneurial leadership course. We're going to do meditation again this morning. So let's get in our position. Everybody kick off your shoes. Get your feet flat on the ground. In fact, let's start different today. Let's stand today. Everybody stand up to start. Okay? Believe it or not, this is a class of executive MBA participants. It's 9 a.m. on a Thursday morning at INSEAD's Asia campus in Singapore. Randall Carlock, a professor of entrepreneurship and family enterprise, is kicking off the day with a meditation session. One, focusing on our bodies, focusing on our relaxation. Now roll our shoulders the other way. Okay, stop a moment and just breathe. Professor Carlock leads the class through some Pilates movements and some deep breathing exercise to center the thoughts of the participants. Let's lift our arms up over our head, making a prayer and pulling our hands down. Brain, so our thoughts will be clear. Stop at our mouths, so our words will be clear. Stop at our heart, so we'll think clearly of others. Coming from all over the world, the students are here for only 10 days as part of their program. They're away from the office, but by no means unplugged. Their phones are buzzing and their families wait for them back home. Their schedules are packed while they're here and the pressure is on. Professor Carlock explains that the meditation is designed to center them, to put them in the here and now, and it's a proven technique he uses himself. Before I was a professor, I was a CEO, and I took my company public on the NASDAQ, and that event really changed my life dramatically because I had gone from being a privately held entrepreneurial business to a business with a lot of stakeholders, shareholders, federal regulators, and the level of stress and tension in my life increased dramatically. And I just wasn't prepared for the kind of pressure that being a CEO, chairman of a public company created. So I went to a workshop, uh, an executive workshop, at the Menninger Clinic in the United States. And for three days, we studied how to deal with stress. And one of the tools they taught us was meditation and mindfulness. And so as I became a professor myself and started to do a lot more work with family and family therapy, I realized what a powerful tool this was. So it came not from my academic background first, but from my actual work as a CEO. While many executives are skeptical of the benefits of meditation, trying to put most of their focus on learning management techniques so they can move up the corporate ladder faster, those exposed to meditation are finding clarity in their decisions, better awareness of those around them, and are learning more about themselves. I expected almost nothing. Uh, I, I said uh, what a five-minute meditation is going to do to me and I was like uh, completely uh, downplaying the importance of it. And uh, the first time I did it, I, in a way, I liked it. And you know, this shaking and movement, and especially the breathing, uh, it kind of cleared my mind. It uh, brings the clarity of mind, um, and when you need it, uh, it, either it's in the morning or during the day, I would really think as a tool to implement uh, for my professional uh, development going forward. If I look at my life, I'm always running around. I've got a thousand balls up in the air at any point in time, being a mom, studying, looking after a team. So it's always, always rushed. And the first appreciation of it was I was actually able to calm down. And all it takes about 10 minutes of just slowing down. It's a good thing to, to be uh, focused and to be self-centered. Uh, so I'd like to bring something similar in the work environment. It helps uh, making a decision specifically in the critical situation. So when you have to take risk, when you have to make a serious uh, decision on someone's behalf or like for a serious uh, matter uh, uh, on your business life, that's important because you step back, you like take, a, you remember your uh, self during the meditation, and then helps uh, to be relaxed and uh, get a better, uh, uh, better decision. I've used it sometimes before in my teams as well. That we've taken some time out, we've we've gone back, stepped away, uh, you know, gone into a moment of silence, into a moment of deep breathing and it has, it has helped. If we're going to be uh, authentic leaders, uh, we have to be more aware of uh, who we are, um, the actions we're doing, and the impact it has on other people.
it's just a part of the evolution of the of management thinking. Uh, you know, at the turn of the century, we had scientific management, and we, we improved efficiency of businesses, and everything was about efficiency. We didn't really even look at people. We were thinking more as engineers. Then after World War II, we had the whole human dimension, the social dimension, where we started to think about how does the human interact in business. And I see the, the 21st century as self-management. Peter Drucker talked about this. Uh, he coined the phrase, self-management and he said basically that the executives, knowledge workers have to manage themselves that other people can't manage them and meditation is another tool for self-management. The emergence of meditation as a tool in business has been a fast one in recent years and with major business leaders and entrepreneurs all touting its benefits as well as business schools it seems to be catching on. Let's come back to the classroom. We're back in class centered and ready to go. Let's talk about values. Your question. 